Hi guys, today I'm going to be talking about a few different things that you can do to improve your industrial design sketching confidence. This is something that I mentioned in a previous video, but since then I've had quite a few messages asking what I actually meant, so I've decided to make a full video covering this. Perhaps this video should have come before my last one, all that means is that you can go check that video straight after this one. So let's get into it. These are my top tips for improving your design confidence. So what do I mean by improving your design sketching confidence? Well, a lot of us designers started out with a background in art and were taught this very feathery, scratchy uh, way of sketching, but this is actually quite inefficient when it comes to sketching products. What we really want to be doing is this nice, fluid sketching movement to get our lines down on the page with the best efficiency. And that's what it's about, getting a balance between descriptiveness and efficiency to convey your ideas in the most descriptive and I guess quickest way possible getting your ideas on the paper. So the first tip is warming up. This is the first thing you can do and you should do before you start sketching. It can really help you deal with the anxiety that comes with not sketching for a while and being worried about putting pen to paper for the first time. And as you can see, a lot of my lines aren't perfect first time. I haven't sketched in a while, so you are really experiencing this as it happens. And we're gonna move on to another exercise, which is to do with laying down ellipses. This is really important just for generally practicing them and making sure that they're controlled and nice. These are not perfect by any means. You can see there, and I guess it's less about making them join up in the ends and more about getting them between those lines and having that control and trying to vary the width of the ellipses uh, as it goes. And they're progressively getting better, they're not perfect, but as I said, I, I've had a while away from sketching since all my university work was finished. So it's starting to get better towards the end. And I'll just finish it off with some circles at the bottom of the page. I wouldn't advise doing this on your lovely fresh marker paper like I did. Normal paper will do. So my next tip is finding the right sketching tool for you. Uh, this is something that I get asked all of the time. Harry, what pens do you use? What pens will work for me? What is the right pen to use as an industrial designer or industrial design student? And honestly, there are so many to choose from and I've spent such a long time trying out different ones that all I can really say is to give them all a go yourself. I've narrowed it down to these sort of few that I like to use and that you should definitely try out as there are quite a variety of different types here. So let's get started and have a look at a few of these individually, going into a bit of depth about what each of them is good for. So we're going to start off with the Papermate Flare. This is my favourite sketching pen of all time. It has a really good fine felt tip that can be used at different angles and lay down these lines that are really the fluid and confident lines that we're after. As you can see here, this is probably not the best example for sketching, but with the way that I'm holding the pen a bit further down, you can really get the control that you're after and beef up the line weight where it's needed. This is my favorite pen and I think you should definitely give this a go. Next up, gel pens. This is a Muji gel pen from Japan. Um, I don't really like sketching fully with this. I do like it for thumbnail sketches, however. Um, I find it a little bit scratchy, but it does go really smooth onto the paper. It's also really good for annotation, as I think that having two line weights on the page for, say, annotation in the main sketch can really lend well to giving your page a bit more depth. If you compare it to annotating with a paper mate flare, that looks a bit too bold to me, so definitely I'd say give the gel pen a go. A lot of people do really, really nice sketches with this pen anyway, so it's just me that doesn't go on with it. Next up is the Biro. This is a lot of people's favourites. I really have a love-hate relationship with this pen. Um, you can see that you can get really nice fluid lines with it, just like this, um, where it sort of falls off here and is bolded towards the top. Compared to the Papermate Flare, it's got a bit more variation, a bit like a pencil. However, it doesn't really work very well with markers, which is a big, big no for me. So I tend to not really use this very much, but it is still good. And a lot of people do some really nice sketches with it, so give it a go. Next up is the pencil. 
specifically like a watercolour pencil. This is another one that I don't really use very much, but again, a lot of people do really, really, really nice sketches with pencil, so give that a go. I guess that my problem with pencil is the temptation to rub it out. You can get really, really nice line weight. So, for example, here I've got lighter ones at the top, and I'm sort of beefing them up straight away on the sides, getting that variation there and there, and then being able to work detail on the top. But just not for me, I'm afraid, because uh, you can't really, again, use it for sketching over with marker. And finally, we have sketching with marker, using it as an underlay on the page, mapping out where you want to sketch first. You can lay down some lines just like this so that you know where to go when you're going to lay in your normal pen later. You can also, while you're there, add some extra, extra detail. For example, if you wanted to add some marker strokes on there just to make it pop off the page all in one go, that's absolutely fine. And as I said, you can take a pen like a paper mate flower and then go in and add your line weights. I've done this quite messily by accident, but you get the idea. This can work really well later on to boost your confidence when perhaps you don't want to do underlays anymore and you just want to do them straight on the page if you're having to work quite fast. That's the stuff there and that's all of those, so give them a try. Next up is rough it out. Um, I'm going to try and do a sketch, sort of start to finish here and just show you how you can use underlays to construct it and then refine it further on. So you can see here I'm just laying down some initial geometry guidelines working with the center line and then some cross sections just to give an idea of the form. Mostly just roughing it and do it by eye. I think I've done it quite well first time here, but if you do need to do some more geometry lines, then this is absolutely the time to do it and just figure out where, where you want to place your lines when you're sketching. I'm doing a computer mouse. I'm looking at like a Logitech one uh, but it's pretty generic and uh, if you want to follow this along then go ahead. So you can see I'm just mapping out where some of the details could go. I'm not really worrying about them being absolutely perfect because at the end of the day I'm just going to go in and do it later. Just correcting some of the lines that I've done already and essentially just trying to establish where I want the flow of the lines and the object to go. I think that direction of lines is quite important and it can really, really, really help communicate your product very well. This is pretty much done, so I'm going to place that underneath a fresh page and get on to refining it. So with this here, we're just going to apply some of the principles that we learned earlier, doing some very nice and crisp lines, trying to be quite confident about them, just laying them down and getting them nice and bold around the edges. As you can see, I'm holding the pen quite far away from the nib because that gives me quite a lot of control over the direction of the line. I'm allowed to put a lot of the movement into my elbow and shoulder rather than just in the wrist. So then you can get these quite wide and fluid movements, which is really nice. The underlay is really coming in handy for helping me map out this geometry without having to put construction lines all over the place. Just adding some more of the contours and as I said you can add some geometry lines or contour lines like this as it can help describe the form but as long as you sort of keep it I guess directional and and help it add to the flow of the object rather than take away from the sketch that's really important I'm just adding some details here doing it by eye adding it in I'm being quite loose about this because I'm gonna add some marker later but it would does look quite nice so as you can see there, I'm doing something that we did in the warm-up where I'm connecting dots together. This can really help you anticipate where you're going to put your lines and where they're going to go. It looked quite nice just like this. Um, messed that one up, but yep, you can try it again and it'll work just like that. So I'm going to add some detail now using the underlay that we did earlier to position that. Just trying to be a bit lighter about this because it is the detail you don't need the sort of thick lines around here as you can you can see the other edge bit add the scroll wheel in as well again doing this by eye i probably should have constructed it properly underneath with some ellipses but i think this works out okay just add some lines in there and probably some hatching as well 
beef up some of these as is a detail we want it to stand out quite nicely there we go so i'm just going to go through and make some of these lines underneath boulders you think it would have an under shadow and this just helps it bring out stand out on the, the page and for the sake of the sketch page i might add a side view thumbnail but I really should have done this probably before all of that and as I said earlier I'll use a gel pen just to annotate it, it doesn't take away from the sketch because the lines are thinner and that's really nice you can add this quite quickly with your designerly handwriting just to make it look really nice and professional I'm going to take a, one single marker and just do some really quick quick marker rendering purely just imagining as if this light is kind of coming from an angle above and maybe to the right I just want it to help describe the form to be honest so I'm not really overworking it which I think is really important I mentioned in a previous video that overworking a sketch with marker can make it look really messy so maybe for something like this to try and keep it to one marker and remember you can always build up layers of marker as well and get it darker when it's just one color just like this maybe add a little bit of shadow underneath there and on there and then make it darker on the scrolling wheel as well and that's that so my last tip is to practice lots I started sketching properly about five years ago. I sketch pretty much every day now. Unfortunately, I haven't got a lot of my old sketch sheets as they're in Loughborough, um, where I can't get to because of the whole COVID thing. But I have got a lot of these sort of classic furniture sketches that I do for fun, and a lot of these old sketches that I used to do for Instagram. Uh, some material testing one, more iconic design sketches. These are just good for honing your skills and. Even things like this, so Iron Man helmet, really good for working with different multi-material methods. I wouldn't say that they reflect totally what industrial design sketching is, but if it's something that helps you develop your skills with, say, markers or pens, then that's all good, to be honest. We've got something like these here. These are chairs, these are great. And uh, of course, the coffee maker. I love working with tan paper, this is a Mandalorian helmet that I did a while back. This worked really cool and um, yeah, you should just sketch every day and sketch things that you love to sketch. Try different things and uh, that's really the only way to, to sort of get better is to just practice and practice and practice. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it was useful in any capacity whatsoever. I really want to do more videos like this in the future and sort of answer queries that you guys have sent me on Instagram or in the YouTube comments as well. So if there's something you wanna see, please comment and please subscribe and follow me on Instagram as well, as it's really helpful. So thank you, until next time.